I'm going to go over a few problems from the Math 3 Unit 3 Worksheet 4. Number 2 I'm going to start with, and it asks to completely factor the following polynomial. Well, here we have three terms, x to the fourth minus 15x squared minus 16. And although it's not quadratic, we can factor it as if it were a quadratic trinomial because the power or the degree of the uh, first term is twice the, the degree of the second term. And if, you ha if it follows that pattern, you can use this process. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 1 times negative 16. And we want these two numbers also to add up to negative 15. With a little bit of thought, you can get come to the answer negative 16 and uh, positive 1. We, if you have a 1 in front of your leading term, uh, you can uh, take a shortcut to factor this. Um, or you could split this up. x to the 4th minus 16x squared plus 1x squared minus 16. So we're splitting up the middle term, the negative 15x squared, to the negative 16x squared plus and if I want, I could write the 1x squared. I'm using the, the negative 16 and the 1 that we came up with. I'm going to factor by grouping. Looking at the left two terms, I could factor out an x squared. And we're left with x squared minus 16. In the right two terms, I could factor out a positive 1 only. And I have another x squared minus 16. And I look at these two terms, and I can factor out an x squared minus 16. And I'm left with an x squared plus 1. The x squared minus 16 is a difference of two squares. So we can factor that further to x plus 4 times x minus 4. But we cannot factor the x squared plus 1. Uh, the sum of two squares. So this is completely factored here. That's your answer you want. On number four, we can factor out an x squared from the first two terms. And I'm left with x squared minus 25, which is a difference of two perfect squares. So that factors to x plus 5 times x minus 5. And now we're completely factored. Next, I want to take a look at number 10. Uh, the instructions here are to factor, then to sketch the graph of the polynomial function, label all x and y intercepts. So this notation here is saying f times g of x, or another way to write that is f of x times g of x. Multiply the two functions together. So um, this is y equals 2x, that's your f of x, times g of x, so times 2x cubed minus 50x. When you graph, you want to factor it as much as you can. Um, so the 2x is already factored enough. But the next factor, I could factor out a, a, another 2x. And I'm left with x squared minus 25. We can multiply the 2x times 2x, um, or combine them. Um, and I'll do that for right now, for 4x squared. But we can factor the uh, x squared minus 25 to x plus 5 times x minus 5. So here we have it compl completely factored. Um, if it helps, if you have any squared terms or cubed terms, expand them. So x squared is x times x. 
and uh, this just makes sure that you're going to keep track of of what your um, zeros are. So here we have x equals zero, another one x equals zero, so multiplicity of two, so it's going to bounce at x equals zero. Uh, this one x plus five, if we set that equal to zero we get x equals negative five, so that's a multiplicity of one. It's going to pass through there, so we're going to bounce pass through um, and then we got x minus 5 if we set that equal to 0 we get x equals 5 and it's going to pass through that one um, before I graph this I want to uh, locate my y-intercept To find the y-intercept, you need to plug in 0 for x. So we get y equals 2, I'll, I'll use this equation right here. Um, so 4 times 0 times 0 times um, x plus 5, so 0 plus 5 times 0 minus 5. So anything times zero is zero, so we end up getting zero. So our y-intercept is zero, zero, but uh, I guess we should have noticed that uh, when we put, if your x-intercept is zero, your y-intercept will also be zero. We're not sure yet um, what the end behavior is of this function, if it's uh, going to go right or left. or um, So I'm going to, uh, let's look at the right end. And the right end is going to uh, point up because uh, we have a positive leading coefficient. So that means um, right end points up. So I'm going to make the right end point up. It's going to pass through that point. It's going to bounce at 0, 0 come back up to the next one, it's going to pass through, and I have it. Looking at my graph, I know my multiplicity is even, and if I look at my degree here, the degree is going to be 4, which is even, and so that matches what I have in my graph. we're asked to factor each polynomial then the sketch labeling x and y intercepts and answer the question uh, so here we want f minus g of x which is the same thing as f of x minus g of x so it's asking us to subtract uh, the two equations so y equals f of x so 2x cubed minus g of x careful to put g of x in parentheses because that negative or that minus sign needs to be distributed to both the 12x squared and the negative 18x. So when we simplify this, we get 2x cubed minus 12x squared minus 18x. Next, try to factor this. Each of the three terms um, is divisible by 2x, so I factor 2x out and get x squared minus 6x. I made a mistake here. When you distribute that negative, you actually get a positive 18. So this should be positive uh, 9. And then continue tr to try to factor. We had x squared minus 6x plus 9. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to 1 times 9 and add to negative 6. And negative 3 and negative 3 work. So now we can factor this thing and we get y equals 2x times x minus 3 times another x minus 3. 
we could write x minus 3 squared, but it's fine to leave it this way. Um, so if we set uh, x equal to 0, we get x is 0. Um, we set x minus 3 equal to 0, we get x is 3. And we get another one here. So we double multiplicity. So at 3, it's going to bounce. At zero, there's only one, uh, so it's going to um, pass through there. Uh, we don't have to find the y-intercept on this one because the y-intercept is the uh, at zero. That that is your x-intercept, just like we did in the last one. It was unnecessary for us to do. Um, it had a y-intercept, an x-intercept at zero which ended up being the y-intercept as well. We do want to know which way the right end points. So if we were to multiply 2x times x times x together, we get 2x to the third. And our leading coefficient would be positive. So the right end of this graph is going to be pointed up. And it pat oops, it bounces at 3. So when it hits 3, it bounces back up and passes through at 0, 0. So the graph is going to look something like that. A asks how many x-intercepts there are. Well, there are two distinct intercepts how many relative maximums there's one relative maximum a relative maximum is where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing relative minimums. There's one relative minimum. That's where it changes from decreasing to increasing. And that actually happens at um, at 3, 0. And that's all we're going to do on that section.